Hi, this is Chris Korlinski from the Microsoft SQL Server Escalation Services team. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to put a SQL Server server-wide trigger that will first log a user attempting to drop the database and then it will prevent the drop of a database. This will kind of give you an introduction to using some of the server-side triggers. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the trigger code logic would look like. So here we have the create trigger statement with the name of the trigger. I'm going to do this on the server for all databases for the drop database command. Basically what I'm doing is clearing a variable and then I'm going to concatenate some text in along with a function that returns a login of the user who's doing the drop. And then I'm going to use this function here called event data to pull the command text out. And more information about this function and using event data, you can find it here in the SQL Server books online. Look for event data. What I'm going to do with that variable is I'm going to go ahead and use the raise error function to write the output from that to the SQL Server error log. And then as you can see the trigger then does a rollback to prevent the drop of the database. Let's go ahead and set this up and give this a try. Go and go ahead here and execute it. Let's go over here under server objects. I'm going to do a refresh, triggers, and there is my prevent drop trigger. Let's go ahead and enable the trigger and turn it on. And I've got a test here I'm going to do to try and create, then drop the database and let the trigger catch it. First of all, I'll go ahead and run the function, kind of verify my user that's logged in. So I've got created a database. And now I'm a user that comes along and goes ahead and tries to uh, drop the database. And we can see here's our error message being generated. It's a drop attempted by user, my user, and there was the command I was trying to execute, the drop database. And this was written here in the SQL Server error log. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Go to SQL Server logs. Do a refresh current and view the log and we can see here is the error message that was displayed in the SQL Server error log. Let's go ahead back to the trigger. So if I want to I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the trigger and disable it. Now for kind of cleanup purposes I'm going to go ahead here and drop the trigger and then I'm going to recycle my SQL Server error log just so this error doesn't show up inside the current error log. These are optional. I'm doing this only for demonstration purposes where I'm disabling the trigger, then dropping the trigger, and then cycling out the error log. So again, this was a create trigger on a server-wide trigger. So look for an event such as a drop database. And we're doing a number of things within the trigger, including getting the user login, and the command they were trying to do, writing that information to the error log, and then going ahead and stopping a uh, drop of the database by doing a rollback. Books Online has a lot more examples of doing triggers at the server level to capture this kind of information. Hey, this has been Chris Korlinski from the Microsoft SQL Server Escalation Services team. Thanks for listening.